Is your Chinese diesel heater pouring out white smoke? This is almost certainly something that you can fix yourself. All you need is a handful of ordinary tools and this video. I've tried to make this video the best answer that you'll find on the internet and I'm sharing it freely, but I do have two requests. If you did find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps stop the YouTube algorithm from putting the video into cold storage and it allows other people to find the video as easily as you did. Secondly, if this video helped save you from paying a professional or installing a new heater, you can buy me a beer using the PayPal link in the video description below. Anyway, enough of that. Here we go. I hope this helps you. The diesel heater has three chambers. The heating chamber, the combustion chamber, and the ignition chamber. The problem I'm about to explain may affect one or both of those last two parts. The diesel heater works through the combustion of diesel. Good combustion is dependent on three ingredients, fuel, air, and heat. Compromising just one of these three ingredients can compromise combustion. White smoke is a sign of pure combustion. It is actually unburnt diesel vapor and is formed in the presence of diesel and heat, but in the absence of adequate airflow. I've actually used a piece of duct tape to cause this heater to smoke, demonstrating this very principle. Unfortunately for these diesel heaters, good airflow and heat are also dependent on good combustion. This codependency between good combustion and its ingredients heat and airflow means that the introduction of a compromise will trigger a self-perpetuating cycle of deterioration in the heater's performance, where it will begin to smoke more and more and then eventually begin to extinguish itself and struggle to start up. This is because pure combustion not only produces white smoke, but also coke, both of which are forms of unburnt diesel. A buildup of coke inside the combustion chamber restricts airflow through the chamber and also acts as an insulator, causing heat to be lost up the exhaust rather than retained and recycled by the cast aluminium casing of the combustion chamber. Halfway through my first winter using a diesel heater, I found it began to smoke badly when running. There were multiple reasons for this. I had installed the heater outside, strapped under my bus, and I had plumbed it so that it was heating outdoor air and pumping it into the bus rather than recirculating and reheating indoor air. This made the heater work harder, but it meant that the air inside was always fresh and more importantly, very dry. Great for drying laundry and preventing mold. However, because the combustion chamber sometimes had to heat such cool air, it would struggle to retain enough heat for optimum combustion, and the resulting smoke would condense on the interior of the chamber, further worsening the problem. It was worsened again by the fact that it would often force the heater to run at idle, and it rarely got the opportunity to burn furiously enough to reverse the coking process. Another issue occurred when it was windy or when I would drive through a cold night with the diesel heater running. This meant the exhaust pipe would be kept extra cold by the external airflow passing over it and caused water vapor in the exhaust to condense on the internal wall of the exhaust pipe. Because my exhaust did not angle downwards, this condensation would accumulate into a gully trap through which the exhaust would have to force itself. This restriction in airflow, compounded with the excessive draw of heat from the casing of the combustion chamber to produce long periods of very poor, smoky combustion, accelerating the coking process of the combustion chamber. When the heater eventually reached a point where it did not start easily and often extinguished and was generally very smoky, I dismantled it and scraped away all the coke lining the combustion and ignition chambers. I probably removed three or four cups of the stuff. 
After that, the heater worked great again for another couple of winters, as long as I took care to allow it to recirculate at times, and at least occasionally ran it at full bore to burn off any developing coke. It is easy enough to clean, and takes about 20 or 30 minutes in total. You can scrape the chamber out with a screwdriver or butter knife before rebuilding and reinstalling the heater again. However, at this point I made a subtle mistake which would trigger a slow cycle of deterioration in the ignition chamber alone. It would take a couple of winters before the problem became obvious, but this time the heater was slow to start as before, producing copious white smoke but once started, it would run fine. The ignition chamber also requires all three ingredients of combustion to ignite the heater. The diesel line is actually fed into the ignition chamber. There is a small hole to allow a small proportion of the airflow to pass through the ignition chamber. And the heat is provided by a glow plug, which slides into the chamber and is surrounded by the mesh sleeve. The mesh sleeve acts like a catalyst. It provides an interface for the maximum interaction between the three ingredients of ignition. The glow plug heats the mesh, the diesel line sprays fuel over the mesh, and air is blown through the mesh. The first time I serviced the heater, I failed to slide the mesh fully back into place and unwittingly allowed it to obscure the barely noticeable intake port for the ignition chamber. Having the mesh covering the air intake hole partially restricted airflow through the ignition chamber. I had to dismantle the heater a couple of times before I realized what the problem was, because I found it generally very clean inside, and I assumed the problem was caused by something else. While the resulting white smoke showed that there was diesel and heat present, what wasn't so obvious was that this airflow was actually bypassing the ignition chamber and glow plug. I eventually realized that the mesh sleeve was actually covering the intake port, and this had led to coking of the ignition chamber alone. This was why this heater was struggling to start, despite running fine once it did. So even if the combustion chamber is clean and the heater runs well, it may still struggle to start up because there is a local buildup remaining in the ignition chamber. Before you blow money on a professional service, new parts, or a whole new heater, check the chambers are clean inside, paying particular attention to the ignition chamber, which is more difficult to visualize and access, and may be clogged even if the combustion chamber is clean. If the mesh itself is clogged, Soak it in some diesel, or heat it in the flame of a gas cooktop, and be sure the mesh sleeve does not obscure the air intake port of the ignition chamber. That's it. Ensuring that your heater is periodically run at full bore, and that condensation can't become trapped in the exhaust pipe, are effective ways of making sure that this problem doesn't happen again. Having the heater recirculate indoor air rather than drawing in cold air from outside will also help, and it will reduce your fuel bill. If you're very sure that clogging is not what's causing your smoking problem on startup, then it might be that your glow plug is not quite getting hot enough, and the usual reason for that is that the glow plug is experiencing too much of a voltage drop when under load, usually because of per connections or long skinny wires. Anyway, I hope that helped. If it did, Remember to give this video a like so it doesn't get lost.